All right, skull, bones, bone markings. Let's do it. Start off with the frontal. It's in the front. Wow, front, frontal, amazing. Next up, the side bones, uh, the top of the head of the cranium. We have the parietal found here. Hands. Hold on. There we go. Parietal. Bam. You got one here. You got one there. Two parietals. Okay, next up we have the temporal bone. Where is that sucker? Temporal bone. Temporal bone. That's right down there. Temporal bone. And again, you have one on the other side. You can imagine what it looks like. Okay, next up, let's go to the back. Tilt this thing over a little bit. Right there, that bone's staring you right there in the face. That, friends, is the occipital bone. So the occipital bone, turn this thing on its side so we can see it. There we go. Occipital bone, this whole area. Occipital. Cool. Okay, now that we've done that, let's take a peek at the sutures, right? All these lines that are on the hair. We've got some options. Uh, the sutures, we have the coronal suture, remember from the coronal plane. If we look ahead here, this whole line, all coronal suture, okay? Next up, the sagittal suture, also following along with our planes. And we can see that is right here. So all on the sagittal plane. Next up, squamous. So when you're lying flat on the ground, a nice squamous flat cut, and you're lying with your head on your side, right? That's kind of how I think about it. And on the side, and then the back one that separates the parietal and the occipital bones. And you should be able to think about what bones are separated by these sutures. A lambdoid found here. Now always remember this one because if you're driving a Lambo, a Lamborghini, it's gonna, you're going to hit the pedal and your head's going to hit the back of the seat, right? And so this part would hit the back of that seat cushion. And I bet it would be comfortable because it's a Lamborghini. I don't know. Never driven one. Probably never going to. I'm fine with that. Anyway. Next up, another bone. Some of the sphenoid. And that'll be right here. But oh man, is it the only place you could find a sphenoid? I think not. Uh, you also have inside here another sphenoid location where the pin's pointing to. And then, let's pop the sucker off this thing. Let's bust a head open. Come on now. Hmm. It turns out this is kind of hard to do. Well, let's come back to that. Uh, we'll come back to that later. We'll look at the sphenoid to get another view. Anyway, let's go with something easy that doesn't require trying to break this thing. Uh, nasal. Nasal, right there. Okay. Uh, should we look at the vomer? I think so. I think it's time. The vomer. It's this kind of bottom part here. You can also see it in the back. I'll show you in a second. This little view over here is pretty helpful. So this view there. That redness is the vomer. If we turn this thing over, you can also see it uh, here. I'm just trying to... I would have guessed a round object would have a hard time staying uh, open. No! There we go. Alright. Alright, there's the vomer right there. Vomer! Uh, while we're in that department, let's take a look at the palantine. Palantine. So if you've ever thinking about the mouth, the hard palate, kind of a big uh, feature when it comes to eating, so you can separate the, the breathing cavities. But anyway, palatine, right here. And it's just this area here. This is something else. That's not it. This is it. Okay. Uh, speaking of that something else, let's look at it. The maxilla. So the upper part of your jaw. Maxilla. It's kind of blurry. There we go. The maxilla. All right here. Look at that. Maxilla. Powerful. Prominent. Maxilla. Okay, also on the eye socket, the zygomatic here. All right. And then we have another eye socket, the ethmoid. Ooh, and that's right in there where this little pin cap is pointing to. Ethmoid. Also see this on the inside. We'll look at that in a minute. And then the mandible, the big rascal. So it's got the sharpie. Uh, is this whole thing? So your lower jaw. Other organisms that are not mammals can have multi-bone jaws. We have one. We're special. 
Uh, then we have the zygomatic. So the eye socket, again, you have a few. So you have the sphenoid, zygomatic, maxillum. Then you have the ethmoid. And then the one we don't have, we haven't talked about yet, the lacrimal. Right there. Fits in right there. So that's your lacrimal. And so this is easy because if you look in here, there's this little hole. That's where the lacrimal duct drains. So if you're tear duct, and no, lacrimal gland, lacrimal duct. It makes sense. Bones of the eye socket, you should know. While we're in the eye socket, let's take a look at some of the bone markings of this sucker. Starting off with the optic canal. Now the optic canal is pretty important for where um, the optic nerve will exit from your eye to carry those, what you're seeing in your eyeballs to your brain. And that's that big hole back there. So the pin is now going through that hole. That's the optic canal. So there, that hole. Then we have some fissures, so I had some lines. I got two of these. So the superior orbital fissure is, well, superior. So it's up there, that line. The inferior orbital fissure is below it. Who would have guessed? It's inferior. And there it is. Uh, it looks like a halfway X. It's pretty sweet. All right, zygomatic process. We're in the ballpark. Let's hit it up. Zygomatic process. It's a process, which is a bone extension, off the zygomaticus. So zygomatic bone, zygomatic process. So cool. Awesome. What we got next? Uh, let's see. Let's do some of these other stuff. So mental foramen. Foramen means hole. Chin means men uh, mental means chin. So those are your big chin hole. You got two on either side. That's your mental foramen. Chin hole. Easy, right? And when, like, if you're thinking about the mental, because, like, oh, I don't know, when you're doing some heavy, serious thinking, right? Put your, like, ch put your chin on your hand in the fist fashion. No, I don't know. That's how I always remembered it. Do what you do. Uh, what else we got? Occipital condyle. This thing allows for articulation with the atlas, which is the first vertebrae. And there we go. Occipital condyle, one on either side. Occipital condyle. Now, you may be noticing a big hole. That big hole is called the foramen magnum. And his name literally means big hole. So, foreman, science word for hole. Magnum, big. Easy. Okay, next up, styloid process. Styloid process, and it looks like a stylus, this little extension coming off. And so there's a couple of these also in the arm bones. So the ulnar and radius also have these, and it's a bony projection kind of like this. So, styloid process. Um, and then we also have the mastoid process, and so that's found here, the mastoid process. Kind of this uh, bumpy looking little spot projection off the bone. Okay, uh, oh. Now hearing as well, how you're probably enjoying part of this whole experience, and thankfully that's made possible through the external auditory meatus, which is there. That, that hole there, that is the external auditory meatus. All right, now bear with me. I'm going to try and get this thing open again because that's all we have left. Covered a lot. It's been great. Oh, we got it open. Yes. Success. Okay, so now we've cracked this skull open. Now we're going to check inside of some stuff. Earlier, I mentioned the sphenoid bone. You can see it inside of here. And look at this. This beautiful thing. It's like a butterfly stuck in concrete. That's what the sphenoid's like. It's dead. It's sad. Uh, but within this sphenoid, we got some bone markings. We have the cilla turcica, cilla tertica, whatever you want to say it. It's a little saddle here. So if you're riding this butterfly, this is where you'd sit. It's a little cockpit area. And we got some wings, right? Butterfly needs wings. Greater wing is the bigger wing. And it is so great, it's down here. So this area is the greater wing of the sphenoid. Check that out. Man, that's a wing. I'm, I'm impressed. Truly lives up to the name of greater. Next up, the lesser wing. And you know what? Despite being lesser, it's still cool. It does a good purpose. And that's this here. That is the lesser wing, this whole area. Okay, and that knocks out that. Two things left, folks. Cribiform plates is a structure on the ethmoid bone, and it's these things here. That's your cribiform plates right there. And then we have the Christogali which is this prominent extension that comes off of the ethmoid right there. Krista, golly. All right. Well, that's it for the skull. Good luck.